Hello and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto. In this video, I'll be covering four node security best practices and general tips, specifically to teach node operators or potential node operators a little bit about AWS account um, and why that's important, security around the, the BNB wallet, and that can be applied to all wallets, understanding of the admin machine, the AWS or cloud provider, and Kubernetes pods and how they all work together, and safe practices when engaging within the community. Whilst this is tailored to Thornode operators, I'll be covering a lot of general security tips that you can apply to many areas, not just as a Thornode operator. So are you doing them all? This will be an update of a previous management video I've done, which should be um, displayed above right now. This is a very oversimplified diagram of ThorChain from a Thornode's point of view. Firstly, we have the, the node operator itself here, and they have a wallet that they use to bond. They bond to the Asgard vault. They have a computer and this, this admin computer um, deploys all of the infrastructure as well as the um, Kubernetes cluster to, um, in our case, AWS, or it will be the normal cloud provider. Once deployed, that sets up an uh, Ugrasol vault and that holds uh, funds within the network as well. So they're the basic uh, components of what's on the diagram. As an attacker, I'll go for two things. I'm gonna go for your wallet or the Ugrasol vault. If I get your wallet, I can do one or two leave requests, depending whether you're tuned in, and I'll get your full bond plus whatever other funds are in there at the time. If I get your Ugrasol vault, I will get all the funds that are stored in there, which the value is about 25% of what you've bonded. And you could lose, as the operator, you could lose all of your bond because you've lost control over the, the, the funds within the Ugrasol vault. So let's talk about security practices within AWS, then we'll move on to other areas. Within AWS, you obviously have to sign up with a username and password. You wanna select a good username, uh, which is an email address and a good password. Before you do that, and before you sign up to like anything, you want to head on to this website and say, have I been pawned? And you put your email address in there and that'll tell you whether or not there has been a breach found. So my quick example that I've done previously here was to get this random email address, stick it in, and you'll see that this person um, has been pawned before. So this goes through all previous like data breaches and leaks of personal information and sees whether or not your email address has been one of them. So you wanna set up like a very good email and unique email that you haven't used before when setting up your um, AWS, AWS account to ensure that nobody kind of knows the username and password because if they get control of AWS, then they can get access to the Ugrasol vault. So I'd recommend setting up an alias, something that you've not used before, or you can like go to Proton Mail or something like that, a new email provider to make sure it's even more secure. Next is password management. Whilst you need to make sure you've got a really strong password that someone can't guess, uh, there are many good password managers around. Um, so have a look through them. Some are paid for, some are pretty good for free. Um, personal choice, but this enables you to have unique email and password combinations without trying to remember them. Um, that can be secured by one long pass phrase. Next is two-factor authentication, which is an absolute must. It should be on your AWS, it has to be on your AWS account, it should be on your email, it should be on your banking, it should be on anything you can possibly get it on uh, within like you know, two-factor authentication enabled. Within AWS, uh, very simple, you go to, I think it's your security center under your login from the top, then you go to multi-factor authentication and you, you, you can enable that through like a G code or whatever on your device. Ensure that multi-factor authentication is like the standard because then you've got something, a unique username, a unique password, and you've got two-factor authentication, a G-code. An attacker then needs all three things in order to get access to your AWS console. Whilst they might get one, they might get two, getting three is gonna be extremely unlikely. Right, so that's AWS and securing your, um, your AWS console. Next, we're gonna talk about a wallet. So you wanna have a clean wallet. Um, you don't wanna be using the same wallet that you were using to stake in the Rune Vault. That's got all your transaction history on it. The same one that you've got staking, which has all your funds in there that you're, you're being a liquidity provider for. You wanna set up a clean wallet. Um, 
And you can do it through here, which is like a Kiso wallet or something, something up on Trust Wallet. However, I'd you know extremely highly recommend through as much emphasis as I can to set up a ledger, cold wallet, a cold storage, put it into cold storage, something like a ledger. And when you send your funds, don't just like send your funds from your old ring wallet or staking directly to it because you know it's a blockchain, it's it's easily verifiable. At least send it back to the exchange or an exchange to obfuscate it. So that way if someone knows that oh this address is your address, there's not a clear and easy paper trail to your node address. Because it's all about trying to protect your privacy, protect your identity, so people don't know you, you know, walking around with like a million dollars worth of room. So definitely, yes, you need, you want a clean wallet, you want it on cold storage, um, and sending it back to exchange, even on centralized exchange, is a way that it can obfuscate, like bring all together all the transactions and seeing one out. It's just a better practice than than sending it from an old wallet to a new, you know, quote unquote, new wallet. Once you've got your ledger set up, you need to step back up the seed phrase for the ledger as well as the derivation path. Um, that's particularly important for, for Bitcoin as well. Um, so to set up your seed phrase, you can get one of these devices, you can put that in metal, which is going to be much better than, um, than putting it on the, the paper thing that comes with the, the ledger device. Uh, so you can set that up, it's pretty good, something like this, much more secure. And then you want to set up, um, and then you want to back up the derivation, derivation path if, as well. So that way, um, it kind of looks like this. It's just a way that you can get to the particular address. And if you're not sure what it is, um, I'll be putting all the links to these articles below in the description. So once you set up all those things, you've secured your ledger device, then you can use that when bonding uh, your your room um, as a as a Thorno operator in a much more secure way. And that kind of prevents an attacker from getting control of your wallet. Next is to keep your address private. So you don't want to be showing it in screenshots. You don't want to be telling people this is your address. You don't want to be creating videos with your address in it um, and this type of thing because that address should be yours because you don't, the whole idea is you want that address to be sort of like uh, anonymous uh, as well as your four node address. So they're not tying that to your identity. So you want to, you just want to keep your, you want to keep your main addresses private because um, then people don't know, you know who you are and you can, kind of fly under the radar a lot better. Right, so now we've got our AWS account secured. We've got our wallet secured on a nice uh, on a nice ledger. And we're not giving out any of that information to anybody. We keep it private. Um, we don't share that main address. Next, let's turn our, our attention to the admin computer. So the admin computer is, is used to first set up the infrastructure within the AWS and then deploy the Kubernetes cluster and everything required from the third or four node. And then it becomes kind of like, it just pulls the strings. It doesn't run anything of substance itself. Uh, so it doesn't require to be run once everything's set up, unless you need to do some admin tasks. That said, it contains a, um, a gateway to AWS and the Kubernetes cluster. So if somebody bad gets a hold of that, then they can potentially get a hold of the Yugosol vault. So you need to secure this admin computer as well. So if it's not required, turn it off. If it's a virtual machine, like a Hyper-V machine or stuff like that, you can turn it off. If it's on your personal computer, you can secure that personal computer, like physically, home, uh, stuff like that. You can put it on the cloud, and that way you can securely access it using, you know, 2FA, good username, password, in some type of cloud account. Uh, it's the main thing is don't have it on a laptop where you're walking around to and from work on the bus and stuff like that, because essentially it's a gateway to 25% of your bond. And as I said, someone accesses and steals the funds out of Ubisoft Vault, then you could potentially lose all of your bond. So you want to secure that admin computer and understand that it doesn't actually need to be on unless you're doing administrative tasks. One point within the admin computer, admin computer contains a couple of sensitive files as well, one of them being the perm file. The perm file is a part of uh, certificates, so like SSL and stuff like that. And that may contain private keys, not just public keys um, and risk certificates, but it may contain private keys as well. So that can be used potentially to gain access to the AWS console, or the Kubernetes console and stuff like that in order to access the Ubisoft vault. So there's been talk, um, at least one person on the chat said that they could move this off to a USB to make it even more secure. 
I'll leave that up to you, but understand that admin computer through stuff like the perm file has all the keys to access your four node and needs to be guarded and quite secure. Like a good rule of thumb is always plan 10x. So when you're thinking about your ledger, when you're thinking about your AWS console configuration and security and your admin security, you wanna be planning 10 times the current value. So runes just over a dollar, you need like a million rune to um, bond, so it's a million dollars. You wanna plan on $10 million type security. So that's the type of mindset you wanna be thinking about. Um, and that'll ensure that you're, you're making it extremely difficult next to impossible for a, an attacker or an adverse person to get a hold of your funds and start stuffing with things. Next is node management. So once you've created a Thor node, you'll be able to back up the, the C phrase of the Thor node, the economic phrase of it. And that's kind of like backing up the, well, this is the C phrase for the Thor node, but also that would give potentially access to the Ubisoft vault as well. So you can just do make the moment when you've got it and you can back up the password as well because you would have had to set the password in when you um, set up your, your floor node when you do the deployment of it. So there are two things you want to back up and you want to back them up in a very strict um, way as well. So you can back them up under metal um, and you want to hide them away, kind of like um, you did with your ledger when you backed that up and you secured the ledger so C phrase. Lastly, I want to talk about community engagement. So we talked about you want to keep your node address private. You want to like your Thor node address private. You want to keep your main node address private. You want to keep like specifics, you know, uh, how much I've bonded. You kind of want to have a separation between your identity and your Thor node, like, you know, who you are and the business you're running. Uh, or otherwise, if they come together, then that's, that's potentially going to a way that an attacker can target people if they know, oh, this person has all these funds, so they're going to be, you know, someone they're going to target. So you, you, you kind of want to keep that on the low. Um, posting community chats, so there's the, there's the, the dev group, the community group. If you have questions, put them in there. Do not put them, um, don't DM the, the admins. They're, they're probably not going to reply, um, to be honest. Uh, or if they do reply, they're going to say, put it in the community chat. It's much safer. If an admin does DM you, uh, don't believe it. Um, even if they look legit, uh, you can always verify that on the community chat. To say, oh, hi Kai, did you DM me or something like this. So get it verified. Um, you know, don't trust verify at all times. Um, the only time you would be using DMs, like I, I have on the community chat or the dev chat, I have a specific issue and then the admin comes in, you're talking about it, oh, please PM me your address and we can go from there. Well, then you kind of can expect and you know that that's what's expected. Um, having said that, never trust anyone on Telegram without independently checking them, just as I said before. Um, only follow instructions that are in the community chats. I wouldn't do it from there, from DMs, unless you absolutely know and you've kind of like checked it out previously. So, if, you know, Lena or Kai says, oh, you know, do this, go make the mimic and show me what's there. Like, they wouldn't be doing that. Like, that's just a bit, bit bollocks and I wouldn't trust that. So take that with a pinch of salt. And if you have any doubts and it's okay to doubt, say, hey, look, you know, um, put it on the community chat, Lena said to do this, or Kai said to do this, does this sound realistic? Um, better do that than actually have it someone bogus and then, you know, they get your, go get funds and you have a security breach. Don't trust anyone. Always hide information on your screenshots. Uh, you know, if you've got like make status, you've done a screenshot, block out your, um, your address. I know I've picked up people for it. Um, good community will help everybody else and, and pick each other up if they do it. So you can delete that or amend that particular um, image in the chat. So to sum up here, we've talked about um, securing your AWS through a good uh, email address that's, that hasn't been born, that, that's something unique and good password and setting up two-factor authentication so people can't access your AWS account. We've talked about securing your um, admin computer so making sure it's not on, it, it's got two-factor authentication. Um, if it's in the cloud, it's secured. You can even start put two-factor authentication when you log into a Linux box as well, if you really want to go that hard. Um, and we've talked about the perm file, which again is a way to get in there. Um, so securing this information is, is quite important. And by, by doing this, it's going to reduce the chances dramatically from someone getting the funds within the Ubisoft vault. 
And all we've also talked about the Binance wallet, putting that on Ledger, putting that on cold storage, and then securing that. Um, so that would reduce the, the chances of someone getting access to this and getting your bond. And last, we talked about the community chat, which is essentially a way of getting information on, on either the wallet or your node setup, um, understanding who you are and what your node setup is um, to, to get your funds. Because that's really what the community is, is there to bait you to, to, to do phishing and to try and get you to expose key information um, in order to get to those funds. So how did you go? How's your setup going? Is there anything that you could do to improve? Let me know in the comments. I really hope that you get something out of this and thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you um, wanna see more content like this. Thanks and bye.